inside me forever Stand for something We appreciate the blessing, bro Let's go Ain't trying to bite it We create it, then we ride it We know our way for seismic And you really can't deny it We just keep on soaring higher You would swear it's autopilot Then you realize tone and shift And made a living off a of fly We are the wave And it's bigger than the moment It's a movement that's progressing Like the trucks stick on opponents it's time to stake our claim, it's time to bring the pain We're battle tested, now it's time to show it ain't a game It's time to make a lane, a different vibe, another way We're known for killing shit, we even help them pick their graves We're breaking free and chains and running towards the daylight The victories in plain sight, we're taking fight to reach heights These boys are tired of waiting, tired of playing, time to go This vibe's been percolating, gaining steam to explode Building anticipation, maybe time to reload We paid our dues, now we're coming back to we kicking toes, we ain't got no time for peepholes We keep evolving for our family and our peoples Ain't playing fair in this game, we just some cheat codes We are the wave and our hurricanes on beast mode Welcome to Wind of the Bay Let's see Jason Hey, 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 what's going on, world? It's your boy, Tone Capone, holding it down, down here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Uh, I got a special guest tonight for the Waves of Debate podcast, actually episode number 10 in the books. And uh, the reason why we had to go ahead and branch out from just doing FM radio is because there's a lot of times we have, you know, people we want to talk to or stories we want to tell that we can't actually, you know, go full detail in. And uh, especially having a radio show on Saturday nights, you know, they ain't. They want us playing music. They don't want us talking that much. So uh, here we go. The Ways of the Bay podcast was born, and 10 episodes later, we're here with hip-hop artist Ezra Banks. So Ezra, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I want to start off by thanking y'all for having me. It's a great pleasure. Bet. But yeah. I'm excited, to, I'm excited to actually get to interview you. I don't remember actually interviewing you for, uh, for more than like 10 minutes before, so this should be fun no, I actually I, get to... I know I had you call in once, but that was about it, I think. So, but it's a uh, it's been a minute on that too, man. Cause we actually, you know, actually I'll, I'll get into that in just a moment, man. But tell me, tell the people out there who Ezra Banks is. Oh um, well, you know, I'm Ezra Banks. You know, I just like to do my own thing or whatever. <clears throat> um, I don't like to specifically classify myself as any genre. I do music. I'm an artist, so. Know that. <laughs> peep that. I peeped that. I heard you singing just a moment ago too. So uh I guess we'll start with uh with the start. You know, where where did you actually hail from? You're not originally from Tampa, are you? No. I'm from the Bronx. From the Bronx? Okay. How long yeah. have you been down this way? Uh for about like almost three years now, I wanna say. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so I met you pretty much after you got down here. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. That's what's up then. So I was moving, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Right. That's crazy. So were you doing music up there in New York too, or did you start that down here? Um, yes I was. You know, I've been doing music for a long time. Um, but when I got down here, um uh, I had ended up meeting um <clears throat> Sassin, Power and Cowboy and I had did the lyrical hole and um then, you know, like, them, they started showing me, like, the business side of it and, like, you know, stuff like that. And then also, too, along the way, now I was teaching myself as well, you know, and getting the knowledge of what I was supposed to do. So when I got here is when I got, like, smart about it. Like, you know, if I really want to make money, you know, there's a certain way you got to go about it. You mm-hmm. can't just, like, put music on SoundCloud and, you know, so that's like the playing the lotto, you know. That's one thing I I, uh, I always talk about, especially with artists, you know, like it's crazy how many people do not know the business side of the music business. So I love to hear you say that right there, because that's something that I, I stress, like probably every interview, probably every radio show, probably every live event, like artists get your music, get your business right. 
Yeah, and you know, a lot of the stuff, like, it don't even be costing nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. some stuff do, but it's not like it costs a crazy amount to, you know, get your shit properly registered and, you know, yeah. Definitely. So, you know. so where did the name Ezra Banks come from? Um, so, <clears throat> I used to call myself Miss Ella, and then I changed it to 3M Dot, and then... I don't know, I was in jail one time and I was reading the Bible and I had seen it in the Bible and I liked it. And I liked it like what they had did too, for the most part. And then I just put the banks after it. I was like, I'm changing my name. When I get out of here, uh-huh. I'm gonna do shit different. Fuck this shit. And yeah, I Total went. Huh? Total rebranding, huh? I just ran with it for a bad little now. <laughs> <laughs> He's so nervous. This is funny. I'm actually enjoying this right now. We have Ezra Banks, man. She's a music artist. I've seen her do hip hop. I just heard her do R and B. All right. I won't even say R and B. I say more like, like pop or, or something. something. I don't even know how to classify like it, but yo, this jamming is what it is though. Like you sent me a couple tracks. And I played one of them on the radio a couple of weeks ago. Uh, by the time y'all air, you know, by the time everybody sees this, it'll be a couple of weeks ago. But yeah. um, let's actually talk about Breakdown because uh, how did you figure out the artist that you wanted to collab with on this song? It's, it's a pretty, pretty major song for Tampa, I would say. Um, so <clears throat> I had seen the verses, right? And remember, Bone Thugs was on there, and um, you know, three six. So three six, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I didn't, I, I did not catch him when they did that song breakdown with Mariah Carey, and then it just made me wanted to go listen to it. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I should try to remake this beat. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. <clears throat> but um, you know, there was a couple beats I wanted to make. Uh, but yeah, so then um. I was already making plans on working with um, Pusha Preem, and you know, um, once he's agreed and everything, I felt like it was a good idea to bring a couple of other more people, because you know, sometimes you don't really know where what is going because of who, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's why you gotta appreciate those people who like genuinely, because those is the ones who's gonna get you around other stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I just felt like, you know, I like how Miss Songbird sings, you know, she sings really good. And then Prophet, you know, that's my boy. So, you know, I just was just trying to look out, you know, the same too. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. That thing came off for real. And it's like, I actually just interviewed uh, Pusher just the last episode. And I already had that in the books uh, before we started talking. So I was like, man, it's kind of crazy how just, you know, time and this shit lines up like that, man. But it's wild because, yeah. you know, I heard the song. I'm just like, I'm jamming. I'm in the car jamming. Like, okay, that's what we're doing right now. I was like, bet. Because uh, we debuted Butterflies. Dig this shit right now, man. We just had episode 115 of Waves of the Bay. So we two plus years into this shit right now. And we had Butterflies on episode 36. So that's how long back, you know what I'm saying, we've been rocking with you. Or at least we've been rocking with you before then. But, you yeah, know, that's when we started the playing the music, you know. But, yeah. yeah. And then we played, uh, what was the other one? Mercy with Tebe. That shit go. And that's actually on on, uh, on Project Loyalty, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment. But uh, And then we got Breakdown, and then Give It To Me, a completely different sound than what I've heard from you before. So what was the, what, what was the idea behind that? Um, So, you know, it started off me liking the beat. <clears throat> like, you know, sometimes I just scroll and I find a beat, and, you know, I was just like, oh, I like this, but how would I do it? How would I do it? You know, and I just kept playing it over and over. And... um. Me and my nephew, we was riding to work, and I just kept playing the beat. And he was like, he was like, you know, I just hear like some high pitch, um, like singing on this. You know what I'm saying? Like someone who could do a high pitch. And we was just like started playing around. You know what I'm saying? And I just took the joke and actually turned it into something. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I took like certain parts where we was just being stupid driving to work. You know, and it was funny. You know what I'm saying? But then, like, when it actually came time to actually, like, sit down and write, I actually took those certain parts and just put it in a song. Like the, um, <clears throat> um, I forgot what part, but yeah. 
And that's how we. Uh, that's how I ended up doing that. You know what I'm saying? I just found a way to move with what I had, the pieces I had, and I just put it together. So when you hear that song, like, do you laugh at them certain parts now? No, because it doesn't sound nothing like how we was playing around with it. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. we were doing like some chipmunk high pitch shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh! All right. <laughs> like playing around with it, blast on the interstate. Like it was fun though. It was funny and fun. But you know, then when I sat down, I was just like, okay, how would I do it like this? You know what I'm saying? A song like how could I take that joke and put it real? You know what I'm saying? So he's always gonna remember that. I hope you know what I'm saying that we was just joking around and. Yeah. You're gonna get his writing credits on that shit. <laughs> That's my nephew, of course. Man, I'm always looking Already. Up. Already with it, yo. Uh, mm-hmm. this, is the, this is the tenth episode of the Ways to Bay podcast. We're speaking with Ezra Banks right here. And uh I'm gonna jump around with you on this one today. I wanna have a little bit of fun, keep you on your toes a little bit. So uh mm-hmm. we're talking about what's happening right now, but I wanna take you all the way back to uh to whenever you got started doing music. So you say you've been at it for a while. Do you remember when you actually got started doing music? Um, yeah, so like a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because like my stepdad, he he had like this DJ equipment stuff when we was little. Like the whole room had records everywhere and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And he would mm-hmm. always be jamming out. But like the first time that I actually felt like like I understood a song and I fell in love with it, like it was just like I don't know, it was just immediate, you know what I'm saying? Like it's still my favorite song to this day. And that's Bone Thugs, uh, Bone Thugs Crossroads. Word. Okay. That's like still my favorite song to this very, very day. Uh, Why? I don't know. I think it's like the different flows and the different everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's four people on one song. Like, you know, sometimes a song don't even sound right with two people on it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Facts. They knew how to go together. Like, I just like that song. Oh. I'm from the Midwest, and uh, when Bone came out, like they, they, we were pumping Bone hard, probably before the rest of the nation got a hold of them, because they y'all didn't really pay attention to probably album, album two, album three, you know, so it's like East ninety nine is when people started paying attention outside of the Midwest. So you know, just seeing them progress that way and becoming like superstars, you know, in the in the game yeah. itself is. Is wow. So hearing you talk about that shit. So were you disappointed with the verses then? Uh-huh. I felt like it was good. Yeah. I love okay. watching the verses. I love watching I love the verses. verses too. Yeah. What was your favorite one so far? Uh um my favorite one was Jada Kiss and um Dipset. Okay. That was my verses favorite. Versus the locks. Verse. Yeah, yeah. I said Jada okay. Kiss, my bad. Uh, yeah, yo, my bad. Jada Kiss, really not, not. Pick that up. Cut that out. That's really what happened, though, yo. That's, you said it right. You know what you said? <laughs> but nah, that one was a mismatch anyways, though. You know, for me being outside of New York, I always looked at Dipset as just having crazy beats, you know, but just, when it I, comes I, I to... Feel like, I feel like I just loved it because, like, you know, they had a point, like, them niggas was really spitting the locks was, you know, uh-huh. and everything that um, Dipset was doing was all, it had all backtrack, you know what I'm saying, like, they, uh-huh. you know. But you fucking with some generational beasts, though, too, man, the locks been holding it down since the mid-90s now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Jada shut their whole damn crew down, he did the same with Fab, I thought Fab was gonna stand more of a chance, but he made play, he made Fab play a spades too early is what it was, man, he changed his whole, his whole game plan out and drew him out of out of character, so Jada is like the the versus MVP, like for real, <laughs> straight yeah. up, man. So who are you? Uh, who were you a fan of when you started getting into music? Um, well, you know, like you know, I was listening to all different types of music, and it was in a different era. You know, what I'm saying like my stepdad would play a certain type of music, then my sister, my older sister, she would play a certain type of music. My brothers would play, my mom would play a certain type. So it was like I was just getting all different. I like everything. You know, what I'm saying it's like I don't really like. I just always liked all type of music. It's time to good. I liked it. You know. All right. So who did you have on your wall then? So I'm pretty sure you had some posters on your wall. I ain't even got front, yo. Ja Rule and 50 Cent. Okay. There we go. There we go. How are you going to have them both on the wall? Mm-hmm. Did you have them on separate walls? Uh-uh. 
Yeah. <laughs> I had one over there by the mirror. I don't know. And the Ja Rule one was little. All right. Well, let me hit you with this one, then, since you just walked into this. If we do a versus with 50 Cent versus Ja Rule, who's going to win that one? Um, 50 Cent. Okay. Okay. You said that quickly, too. Like, you didn't even but I don't know, because, you know, like, Ja Rule has his four hits, you know what I'm saying? Like, or three or four, whatever he got. That's like yeah, really I got some, some bangers, though. Yeah, I know. I can name all four of them bitches when I know. I'm just kidding. What's your, uh, fa- what's your favorite 50 Cent album? Um, Get Rich at That Trying. Okay, what's your favorite track on that one? Uh, probably Many Men. Dope, dope, dope. So I'm guessing you probably watch Power and all that stuff, too, because of 50. Man, I be working so much. I don't really... I need to catch up, dude. I did watch the first, like, three seasons. <laughs> wow. I be seeing got, They got, like, four spinoffs of the shit now. Now, the fifth one coming out now, of course. Yeah, Tommy's the fourth one. That one just came out. Just came out. Mm. You might want to catch up. Yeah. Why you watch the one with Tariq on it? I don't watch the one with Tariq, but I watch the other ones, though. I can't fuck with Tariq yeah, like I've that. Seen I, the one I, I ain't trying to watch any more of that dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, growing up in New York, I know you had hip-hop all around you. Uh, Melting Pot, you had all kinds of diversity around you. When you get to Tampa, what's uh, what's one of the major differences that, that caught you by surprise? One of the major differences? Probably the way they talk. <laughs> Explain. Huh? I don't Explain. know. It's just like it'd be like they'd be cutting off like three letters of the word, and you just like what? <laughs> <laughs> y'all New Yorkers, man. I promise y'all. <laughs> really? Y'all New Yorkers is funny, yo. <laughs> Cause they always make fun of me for how I talk when I go up there too. So it's just it's funny, yo. Like y'all, y'all pretty parallel with that shit. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But that and let me see. I just like I like the music, you know what I'm saying? Definitely like the music. I just like the vibe here. You ever see yourself moving back? No. They ask me all the time, where are you moving back? I'm not. Yeah. My wife's been down here for shit, 15 years now. She's never moving back either. Uh, she's from Manhattan area, so like we go up there. We're going heading up there in a couple weeks, actually. But uh, I love it in, in New York. It's, co- it's so completely different than where I grew up at in Kansas, you know. But I can never live in New York. There's way too many people out there. There's mm-hmm. It's way too expensive for nothing, you know. Like, people are just paying a lot for a little. So it's just... Mm-hmm. Unless you've already been in there, your whole family done, you know, put roots in the in the building with rent control and shit where nobody can move out that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> New York is just crazy, yo, but it's the greatest city in the world, yo. It's dope. But I like Tampa. I like being by the water and I like, you know, it's like, it, like being in Florida is like, it's a nice sight, nicer sight to see to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I just like the palm trees and the birds just walking everywhere, and mm-hmm. the water. Like I like that shit. So, you know, I like it here. It's calm. You know, I ain't bothered with nobody in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All the way. Ghost. All the way. Especially in the winter time, man. People back home were mad at you, and we just sitting up here just chilling. Ain't even thinking about winter time. Got shorts on, just chilling. Nah, it's been cold these last couple of days. Eh, it's been chilly. I, I won't call it cold. It's been chilly, but it's all right. It's a reminder where you at, though. Every time I go back home, it snows, and I'll be mad as fuck. Like, mm-hmm. as soon as it drops down, like, the temperature gets below 40, I'm cranky as hell, yo. And it always happens when I go home. So this right here is all right. I got my hat on when I step outside, though. Can't be getting all cold and shit like that, but... Uh, we are talking with Ezra Banks, episode 10, Waves of the Beta podcast. You dropped the Project Loyalty uh, EP, I guess, or CD album. I'm not sure how you want to refer to it, but it's been about, what, four or five months now? So yeah. now mm-hmm. you look back on it, like, how do you feel about the project in, in general? 
Um, I still like the project. Um, I just feel like I need to promote it more. You know, it's still fresh, so I'm gonna still promote it. It's not that fresh, but you know, it's still promotable. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm gonna go go ahead and promote that, and then promote the two singles that I got. You know. So let me see here. When it comes to Project Loyalty, it felt like a lot of that was personal. So how much of that was like real life and how much of that was entertainment? Mm, probably the beat of song was probably for entertainment. Okay. <laughs> I like it, yo. I was jamming to it. I was like, man, let me take a listen and see what, see what Ezra's working with. Now, and I promise you, I was thinking, yo, she needs to promote this more. So I'm glad you actually said it because I feel the same way. I mean, you got good music out there and it's on streaming platforms as well. So you need to get that out there and, you know, make sure people are streaming, especially, you know, I think back to the butterflies video and I wanted to ask you about this, you know, like you're tackling tough, tough, tough topics in your videos. So why did you decide to go there on the videos? You could have made it a lot more fluff or something, but you actually, you know, went for the jugular with it. All right, so the reason why I did that <clears throat> was because that, you know, that's honestly why I came to Florida the first time. Like, okay. When I came to Florida, it was because my ex was just used to be bugging, you know what I'm saying? So it got to the point where it was, like, necessary to leave. And I did, you know what I'm saying? And then, then you know, like, a year passed or something, and then I met my boyfriend or like eight months passed or something like that and then i met my boyfriend now you know what i'm saying and that's when like that's where the transition is in the video you know what i'm saying like it's from 2018 and then it was 2020 you know what i mean or some shit like that or two, whatever it was you know and it just showed the difference like i went from that to you know just having fun and living my life you know being happy definitely well, that's good to hear. I'm glad you were able to get out of that situation. Uh, I've had to move a relative out of that situation, and it's been yeah, that should get rid of. some shit. Yeah, trust me. I've trust me. So I'm glad you were able to make moves before it was too late, because you never know in this day and age, man. People are all the way crazy. So it could have been too late, shit. You know, but yeah. I'm just glad to be it. I'm just happy. I'm happy. I'm free, feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could just do whatever I want if I want to, you know, without no judgment from nobody. <laughs> Everybody over there, you know? Right. So what y'all gonna say? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> nah, just keep that same feeling, for real. And, uh, yeah, let me ask you this, yo. If you were able to follow your dreams, where would it lead you to? I'll just take care of my family and shit. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, come on with it. Elaborate for me. Um, so I would make it to where they could generate their own money and then, you know what I'm saying, generate more money. Like that, like that. You know, like it just depends, like, you know, how much money I was getting, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it'd be uh -huh. now and I'd be trying to break everybody off, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I could just imagine more money. I'm just like, here, take it all. <laughs> I love you guys. You can have it all. Where would you, where's uh, Where's one of the first places you would travel to? Right now, nowhere. Probably, <laughs> or, uh, when, uh, probably when everything calmed down and stuff. You know, I always wanted to see um the Giza pyramids, like over there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe like a Mayan um temple or something the ruins and all that nah i don't know about the ruins though. okay <laughs> but i just want to see like the pyramids and stuff you know if it's like too much wooded area bitch i don't know excuse me i'm not going through there nope. what you think you about to get dropped off from the hell we, we, we talking about you being rich so you probably would be on some fly shit like that get the hell of helicopter treatment straight to the top yeah. of the pyramid <laughs> they bring you to the top of the pyramid? <laughs> I doubt it, but shit. I would you definitely, that's like one that. thing I would love to see before my life is over is the pyramids. For real. Shit would be dope, man. I've always wanted to go out there, too. I've got a friend that's uh, actually out there, that's traveled out there. And yeah, the pictures are just like, they look like postcards almost. They don't even look real. Like, <laughs> sky is extra blue. 
you know, like everything is just like natural. It's crazy out there, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, man, this is Tom Capone speaking with Ezra Banks, episode 10 of the Waves of the Bay podcast, uh, talking about Project Loyalty, talking about the two new singles that she has out right now. Uh, what's the next video we can expect? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I really haven't. Like, I think I want to do Give It To Me, but, you know, I don't know. You got to put a, dope, you gotta put like a twist on that shit, though. You got to come all the way. You got to go really, all the way with it, you know? <laughs> I, I got a very good idea. Yeah. It's going to be more com- comedy than um serious, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, certain parts will be serious, but it's going to be, like, more com- comedy. Funny type shit. How do you feel like your uh, your music has grown? Like on, with these two new singles compared to Project Loyalty, how do you feel like your music has grown? Mm, probably the sound. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Mm. Okay. But I do. I do like give it to me a lot. A super super lot. All right. So. Why did you tell me to listen to Breakdown first? Huh? Why did you tell me to push Breakdown first then? Um, because um, Give It To Me Don't Drop Till Monday. Okay. Okay, so the timing of it all. I Neither does it. Breakdown either. Breakdown don't drop till Monday either. Oh, shit. But I wanted to drop a little bit of tease out there, you know, by throwing it on the radio real quick. Then when it drops, like, you know, we all got to go ahead and push that shit. You right. know what I'm saying? If people really fuck with us, they're going to download it. Or stream it, you know what I'm saying? You don't even have to download it no more. You just go and play it. You know what I'm saying? That count for us. Like it'd be that simple. It does. Put us in your playlist. Put us in your playlist. <laughs> <laughs> it is that simple if you got your business right. So there we go. Yes. We bring it full circle back around to, to getting money from streaming. A lot of artists don't understand that shit, man. They don't understand you can get paid for open mic nights, you can get paid for, you know, having your music streaming and in restaurants or stores and all that shit, man. Like movies That's- and video games and all kinds of shit, yo. Like there's money out there. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I still haven't learned. Like, how do you capitalize on performing? Like, you know, um, on the um, like you know, I really, I don't know. Yeah, like I don't understand mm-hmm. how performing turns into like how they know you perform. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got you. You got it. It depends on the venue. The venue needs to be registered. Mm. But yeah, that's a that's something pretty. You might want to look into that. That's that's something you can get paid on. I know. Are you still doing doing open mics or when's the last time you performed? Man, I haven't performed for so long. Man, you better get at it, yo. Have you been to to shuffle? Shuffle on Tuesdays. Mm-mm. All right, Mike Mass has an open mic out there. And uh, he has a whole bunch of dope artists come through there. So spoken word artists, all that shit. So shuffle on Tuesdays. I think it it goes until like 12 or 1 or something at night. Oh, all right. So since you haven't performed in a while, what are you looking forward to when it comes to getting back on stage? Um, Well, I'm actually going to perform on the 28th in St. Pete. Okay. at um, At Bottoms Up. Okay, so tell me about that. You excited? You gonna have the strippers around you and all that shit? I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't really <laughs> like performing at the strip club, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, you know what I mean? My homie, like, referred me, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of like, you know, it's just like a homie thing. Like, I kind of want to look out, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it, you know? Well, if you do it, you may as well go all the way with it and, and have the full scenery around you or something, I guess. Because when's the next time you're going to do that, right? Also, oh, you think I should put on a show? <laughs> Come on with it. I don't be seeing that. Like, I don't be seeing nobody put on shows. Like, they just be mad regular with it. Like, you know, I be feeling weird. Like, all right, ready? One, two. <laughs> like, well, that's the difference, yo. A lot of people don't put that that effort into the stage game. Like even when I met you at the open mic night, I mean, you were around the stage, you were doing your thing, you were controlling the mic, controlling the crowd. You know, a lot of people don't have that stage presence, and it's uh, 
a lot of people are just like studio rappers, you know, that like I know rappers that think they're the best that have never got on stage to perform before. And that's just crazy to me. Because I think the stage game goes with the talent, you know, like it goes with the pen. Like you got to be able to rock that shit. You got to be able to connect to your fans, you know? Yeah. But, you know, you get start looking, they start looking at you crazy. Like, man, what they doing? <laughs> you know? So it's like, oh, I'm not doing too much. Nah. But, you know, that was just a, yeah, I should make, I should put a show on. <laughs> you should. With my own girls. Huh? <laughs> you right? gonna bring your own girls in there? That's just... yeah. <laughs> that's next level with it for sure. You know, like the whole time, you know what I'm saying? I'll be show, showing love to the stripper girls, you know what I'm saying? But then when it goes my turn, I'm gonna have my girls, right? Yeah, I think that's how that's it is. dope. That sounds dope right there. For see, real. I, it has to be done as of now, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, get on it. You got time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me ask you this, like, if you were going to put together, uh, like, a Mount Rushmore of uh, of music artists, I won't even limit you to hip-hop, but I'll give you music artists, because I know you look, you branch out a little bit. Give me, like, four, your four top artists of all time. My favorite four? Um, Tupac. Okay. Let's see. Jay-Z. Kanye. I really, I don't know. I like Kanye a lot. Super old high. Kanye or new Kanye? All of it. Kanye always been okay. nice to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Especially the shit that he been leaking now. Ooh, he on fire. That nigga hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely hurt. <laughs> You heard the shit with um with the game saying Nah, I didn't even need to listen to it. Oh Lord. It ain't even drop yet. But you just had Kanye in the studio bopping his head and that playing in the background. I was like, Really? Ooh. <laughs> he was saying some off the wall stuff. That's when he's talking about Pete Davidson? No. That's another it's another one? <laughs> it's another <Okay>. one. <laughs> okay then. I'm gonna go check it out then. I like yeah. old Kanye though. New Kanye's not really doing it for me. Game, uh, it's about the same. Old game is, is a little bit better than new game to me. I mean, but it's you gave me everybody ain't nice, you know what I'm saying? But it's like game be name dropping too much for me, man. It's like every every time you do a song, you got at least eighty three names mentioned in the shit. Like, like just rap, nigga. Like I don't need to hear you drop every name and rhyme that shit, you know, but. Yeah, he definitely, yeah. you damn right about that. I know I'm right about that shit. <laughs> I know for a fact I am. But I rock with game, though. But uh, you giving me Jay, you giving me Kanye. Who's the other two artists? Mm, definitely Jay the Kiss, because he's super nice. And probably Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is super nice, too. Okay. His Lil Wayne's, like, metaphors and oxymoron. Yo, he be just on some other shit. Yeah, his wordplay is ridiculous for sure. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, but that's probably like my top four, you know. And then like I like Rihanna, and I like um, I just be listening to little stuff here and there, you know. Like when I hear a song, I like it. I just listen to the song. But like those would probably be like my go-to's. What's something that you listen to that nobody would expect you to listen to? Probably bachata. I don't know. Okay, like like who? Like like we don't expect you to listen to no damn bachata and shit. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like how do you not expect somebody to? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I tell you, I could listen to some country music. Oh, I, that's why I said earlier. Like you know, the song is good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It don't matter what genre it is. Like if it's a good song, I like it. I know you be in the car listening to to classical music and shit probably. Nah, I really just been trying to manifest these songs, <sighs> these two singles. But I, 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 I really like give it to me. I'm always listening to my music to see like where I could change it up, where I could have fixed it, you know, did it different. Yep. You feel good about give it to me. 
Do you feel the same yeah. about Breakdown? Yeah, I feel good about Breakdown, too. You know what I'm saying? Breakdown, it's like, those are like two total opposites. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Completely. Yeah. I was like, oh, I had to double check the phone. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> but I like the versatility, though. A lot of people like to just stay in their box or put themselves in a box, you know, instead of uh, actually branching out there. So I guess, like, when other people heard that song, like, people around you, and what did they think about it when, when they heard Give It To Me? Um, so, you know, when we was in the studio, um, you know, it was like two people that was there was like telling me like, yeah, it's good. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, then like I just started first sending it to like my family and my peoples and stuff to see what they thought. And everybody just gave me the same <clears throat> um, response. They was like, Oh yeah, that's your mainstream song right there. That's a good crossover song, or that's a good radio song. That's just what they kept saying to me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and push that super hard. Do you write all your music? Yeah, everything. Nice, nice, nice. So how did you sharpen your pen then? How did I sharpen my pen? Mm-hmm. I don't know putting more time into it and thought into it and so what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it and stuff like that rather than just sitting there for 30 minutes and doing it yeah it might sound good but it could sound better I feel like I hear a lot of uh, a lot of female artists just like rely on, on sex to sell like in their lyrics and when I listen to your music you're actually spitting like you're actually talking about something so um why do you choose to actually care about the lyrical content in your music? <clears throat> um, because like let's just say one of my songs take off. You know what I'm saying? I got like mad nieces and nephews and stuff. And you know, and I'm like, look, you know, hypothetically speaking, I'm super famous and they're like, Oh, you know, like how they did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, you know, look at Cardi B, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does she feel when she's sitting at the Grammys? You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, you know, Cardi B for a WAP. You know what I'm saying? Cardi B and Megan <laughs> Thee for a WAP. And you got your grandmother, your mother, your two uh, kids, your husband, all this wet ass. Boy. <laughs> then, then, get a and they all like, dancing and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, I try to do it with Beat It, though. Like, you know, I be trying to say a little slash shit here and there and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Man, episode 10 of the Ways of the Bay podcast, Ezra Banks is in the I, in the building, in the, in the virtual world with me, the metaverse, whatever we call it, this shit, man. But you here with me, and I appreciate you taking time out to talk with me. So I want to know... When it comes to this music, I know you're pushing these two singles. I know you say you want to go back to promoting the the old project. What else do you have out there that you're working on? Um, I got a couple features that I'm gonna be doing music with. You know. Any names you can drop? Um. Oh, you know, Kyra J just sent me something today. Okay. I can mention Kyra. Kyra J sent me something today. Who else? Let me see. And who else I can say? Jay Smooth. I'm going to get working with him. You know, I'm like, you know, yeah. Like, I haven't seen Jay Smooth in forever in a day, yo. Shout out to Jay Smooth, man. Um, When you came to my open mic, who told you about that shit? How did you even find out about that shit? Because I, I had no I idea you were just new from New York. Um, I think I just like found it online or like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was probably following pages, like, you know, cause at the time, like, um, oh, I don't know. Maybe, you know, <clears throat> maybe that was some power in the, um, assassin set up. I'm not sh quite sure. I don't really remember. That's crazy. Yeah. Yo. That's crazy words. how time just flies. Like, and it's been three years later now. It's like, that shit was right. That was on my, uh, that was on my daughter's birthday three years ago. So I remember I held up the camera and I had y'all sing happy birthday to her ass and shit, man. Her birthday's coming up in, on St. Patrick's Day. So that's shit wild how time just comes right back around, yo. And I remember uh, 
And even thinking about this shit now, like I remember meeting you that night, and then I remember, you know, I, I fuck with Chris Jackson pretty hardcore, so I remember seeing you on the cover of BDP magazine, and I'm like, yo, you gracing covers now, like, whoa, well, oh, shit. So how how was that feeling right there, being on the cover of a magazine? It was pretty cool, you know what I'm saying. I don't know. It was dope. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> how did the family take it? Well, you know, they was happy and stuff. They was like, oh, that's cool. You know? I had sent a bunch of copies to them and stuff, and they gave it to people. Like, I got, I got mad pictures and videos that I saved, you know, for when I was doing all that. It was cool. All right. I got the BDP magazine in the old game. I'd have that shit on the wall framed up, probably. Huh? I said I'd have that on the wall framed up. Oh, that's what's up. Like right behind you right now while you're talking. I wouldn't even be in the in the picture. I would just have the cover just talk for me. I'd be on the on the side talking and shit. <laughs> yeah, that right there. I did have gotten them big, you know what I'm saying? But uh-huh. I sent it to I sent them to my niece and nephew. You know what I'm saying? As like, you know, I don't know. And my brother has them hung up in his house, you know, like right in the living room. He got one on each wall. That's what's up, yo. Now, you've talked about your nieces and your nephews and, and, and other family members quite a bit already. So how what is it about, like, the youth that inspires you? Like, it seems like that kind of helps mold, you know, your, your moves almost. No, I honestly feel like the youth is, like, deteriorating. Like, you know what I'm saying? The things that, I don't know, the Internet is a bad place. But it's the Internet, like... I don't know. But when kids have access to all this grown ass shit and it's like, what do you do? You gave them the phone, you know what I'm saying? You gave yeah. them Wi Fi. You get you know what I'm saying? So it's like you let them go on YouTube, so it's like mm-hmm. That's a whole nother topic in itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It is a whole nother topic, but a lot of people are just not being parents, I guess I, I can say. Like, a lot of people that have kids aren't being parents, you know? So, mm-hmm. it's just one of them things. Like, you gotta... Like, I have an almost seven-year-old daughter right now, So you can, in this day and age. So, you can imagine, you know, like, I got my guard up all the way right now. So, it's just one of them things. Like, you gotta be safe and, and watch after yours and, and try to plan ahead and try to have some type of purpose and try to have some type of legacy and, uh, and show them to dream big. And, you know, when you're talking about putting your poster on the wall and sending it over to them, you know, like that makes me think that, you know, they're able to see that they can dream big and, and do what you're doing as well. Yeah, you know, they have different goals that they want to do. Like my niece, one of my nieces, she likes like, you know, the arts part, you know what I'm saying? Like the arts. And then my nephew, he's like mad smart. You know, he's like book smart, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love all my nieces and nephews. I want them all to win. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Do you have a favorite niece or nephew? Mm-mm. All right. I, I was know. trying to see if you was going to buy. <laughs> like, let me catch you up right quick. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, give it to me. Drop him Valentine's. Make sure you all catch that. That's, that part's not going to show because it's so late in the game, right? What, this? Oh. On Valentine's? No, it's not playing on Valentine's. I'm talking about this don't drop to the... um. This will be on March 9th, on. yeah. Yeah, you're right, but it's all good. But I am going to spin that song, though, so it'll be in what rotation song? by the time. Give it to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, so, How yeah. How you going to look at it? You think people gonna like it? I think I think they're gonna be jamming to it because I think it sounds like nothing else that I've played recently. You know what I'm saying? And it has a good vibe, and it has uh, a, like your delivery on there is, is sharp. You know, like it doesn't sound sloppy or nothing. Like it sounds like like it sounds like you were meant to do some shit like that, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be the next evolution of Ezra. I don't, I don't yeah. know. No, but you sound like you was in your pocket on that one. It didn't sound like... It just sounded cohesive, you know? Like, it sounded like it was supposed to. Yeah, we'll be spending that for sure. Yeah. 
I can't wait to see Spaceship's reaction when he hears that shit. I know his ears are going to perk up. I know he be spending on, uh, he spends mercy all the time. Spaceship. I haven't seen him in mad long. Yeah, that dude stay busy, man. He out there in orbit right now doing work. So shout out to Spaceship Partner in Crime. Every Saturday night, y'all can catch us 88.5 WMNF in Tampa Bay uh, doing Waves of the Bay from 10 until midnight. We I don't like calling y'all local artists, and, you know, I go over this all the time because with the Internet and, and the way distribution deals are working, everybody's could be global if you got your business right. But, you know, we make sure we take care of home. We spend Tampa Bay ten toes down every Saturday night for – two plus years, almost two and a half years at this point. So if y'all are out there, man, make sure y'all catch us up. And then uh, we got the podcast, like I said, episode 10 right here, Miss Ezra Banks over here. So I want to know, uh, I feel like, uh, oh yeah, that's a good one right there. There's definitely like a double standard when it comes to women in the in the music game. So can you talk to me about like how it feels to be a lady in, in such a like male dominated industry? You just got to be dominant, too. You know, you just got to show them, like, <laughs> I don't care. You know, you just got to do you, you know what I'm saying? If you believe in something and you're going to push it, you're going to push it regardless of who say what, you know? So you really just got to, like, focus. Fuck what they say. Just like that, huh? I like it. I like it. I like the determination. I like the the confidence. Were you always as confident in, in yourself and your abilities? No. I, I'm not even really that confident. I'm very self-conscious. I think we yeah. all are to a certain extent. But you, at some point, you got to realize that you, uh, that you excel at, at something more than others do. Mm-hmm. I want to know what from what um what tip you would give to your younger self. Um, <clears throat> do what you believe, do what you love, but also follow the guidelines. Like you know, what I'm saying we have to go to school growing up. You know, what I'm saying if I would have known like where it was leading, where it would lead me to now. Maybe I would have worked on it earlier then, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody would have wished they taught their younger self, hey, nah, don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. At least a few things, I'm sure. Younger Tone wouldn't have listened, though. So, <laughs> I, Younger Tone would not have listened to me, so I already understand. So, <laughs> all the way with it. But can you go ahead and drop your social media information so our guests can follow along with you and make sure they listen to the music? Um, yeah, you can find me anywhere under Ezra Banks. Um, it's, uh, Instagram is easy, R-A underscore B-A-N-K-Z. I feel like that's where a lot of people get it messed up. Like they put an S, it's a mm -hmm. Z. You know, you put a Z, I'm popping right up. <laughs> Like, I oh, tell I people all the time. Yeah, people misspell my name all the damn time. Even on Facebook, when I have my name spelled correctly in my name, they'll tag me and misspell my damn name. I don't understand the shit. Oh, yeah. So what are you excited about next on your music? I'm definitely excited about dropping these two songs and then getting the visual. Actually, yeah, that's the visual I want to do. I want to do the visual with Push Supreme. Profit and Miss Songbird. That's definitely the one I want to get done first. You already have but an idea for that one too. Um, we have spoke about a couple things, but we ain't really like agree on nothing yet. But we're gonna see what's up because I want an idea from all of them. You know, what I'm saying we're all in the song. You know, so I want you to have your part. You know what I mean? I want mm -hmm. you to have your part and you to have your part, and I'm gonna have my part. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to combine it. But we have to come up with one method. Like, you know, I ain't going to say because it's a dope method. So I'm not going to yeah. say what it is. Yeah, don't yeah, even so drop that. all that information out here. People will steal your info and, and all that. Yeah, I don't even want to be part of responsible for that. So, <laughs> but no, nah, I'm looking forward to, to what's next. And especially like the next time I talk to you, like, ain't no telling like where you're going to be at in that point, you know, like, because the way stuff's flying right now and, 
you know, like your star is ascending, like these two songs might be the songs to put you on, ain't no telling. But are you actually, you know, that's, that's actually a good question. Is your goal to be signed or, or would you want to just be like an independent artist? I would rather be an independent artist. So that way, you know what I'm saying, I could like open more doors of opportunity for other people because, you know, like when you sign, you... You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to answer to them. I don't have to answer to nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, however y'all mm-hmm. want to run it, we're going to run it like that. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm throwing money in, just know I have to get a percentage. It don't have to be no big percentage, but I need a piece. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. There's enough for everybody to eat. I just need a little, like, crumb over there. Cause, nah, you, know, you got to get your whole slice. But you nah, can pass so you can pass some pepperoni or something to some other people with the meat still too. I ain't gonna what my plan is. <laughs> like I already, I've been seeing this shit for years. You know what I'm saying? So it's just mm-hmm. like now it's just like even more in debt of how it would be when it happens. You know what I'm saying? So mm, well, if it happens, you gotta speak it into existence. It will happen. You just gotta put the work in and be ready for that opportunity and. And mm-hmm. pounce on it when it happens, and you know you keep on making good content and have that in the books. Keep building the credentials, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, your fan base is is dedicated. You know, I've seen them doing dance challenges and shit. So you know, as long as you yeah. rely on them and interact yeah, with them, people. and there, a lot of people did do the challenge, even the rap challenge part of it. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I'm gonna do now. You know what I'm saying? I want to do a challenge. We was talking about that too. Like we gonna do a challenge. Um, and you know, it's gonna be like two things, but one is gonna be for TikTok, and then you know what I'm saying one is gonna be for like everything else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the TikTok mm-hmm. money is vicious right now, man. Like that shit, the super streams right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's super easy to get the streams too. So it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, you just gotta give that good shit. But I do be feeling like lately I'll be getting shadow bad. I don't like that shit. Yeah. <laughs> do you um what is your favorite what is your preferred platform to interact with your get your fans on? I don't know. I really don't like I used to like being in front of the camera and everything and everything. Now it's just like I don't really like being in front of the camera like that. You know, it's just too much self consciousness. Like, oh, oh my god, how do I look? Am I all right? How's my hair? You have to Is hit my that switch. Falling huh? <laughs> you have to hit that switch, especially for where you're trying to get to. Yeah, you unless you're gonna be like Sia, you. you could be like Sia. You could just Ooh. put a look, like, Sia. That's I A. Nah, yeah. not Sia. Sia, you can just perform backwards to everybody, not not show your face ever. Oh my god, do what? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> That's crazy. And you see everybody looked at her like she was crazy. I just want to see what she looks like for real. That's one of the people that stays in character. I've never seen her face, but she can sing. Huh? I wish I could yeah. sing. Do you have like a favorite, uh, like a favorite singer at all? Because I know you're you're branching out and, and doing everything here, you're like. I just like like good music. I always listen. I don't really listen to a lot of new music. When I listen to music, it's old stuff, older stuff. Like you know, just like not now music. Like what? Because everything on the like when you put Pandora on to like the radio for now, it's like all pussy shit. Oh, I'm you know sure all that stuff sounds alike, anyways. Though like everybody's flows sounds alike, and you know it's hard to even tell people apart nowadays. Like they want to sound like other people. Instead of trying to stand out, you know, so it's it's different. But who are you listening to, like from the, from back then? I want to know. I'm an old I school. I'd be listening to shit from like '94 still. I'd be riding. Yeah, I just be re- listening to a lot of stuff. I I rather listen to the older music. I just be putting it on, you know, what I'm saying like '90s hip hop or something, or '90s R&B, and I just jam out. I just like all types of music. I got a couple more versus questions for you then. So if we did a versus with uh, Jodeci and Boys to Men, who would win that one? Um, definitely Boys to Men. Okay, well, you say definitely. Yeah, because um, you know, Boys to Men had more hits in them. I think. I don't know. That might be close. They had crazy, crazy. What else? 
Who, Jodeci? No, Jodeci got three out. Yeah, we don't even need to look into that. <laughs> It'll yeah, be really close. I've been sipping this stuff. I don't want to have this conversation, though. No. <laughs> and then the one that me and Spaceship have been calling for for the longest is Mary J versus Mariah. So if that ever went down, who would you go? Who would you be with on that? Damn, you know what? That would be a good ass fucking matchup. Because yeah. Mary J Blige has a lot of hits. But damn, I don't know because you know what I'm saying. I feel like um, Mariah Carey been on more people's songs and generated more hits like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like mm-hmm. every single song that Mariah was singing would probably be a hit. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then my last question for you when it comes to this versus shit. Jay-Z said he was unbeatable when it comes to versus. So do you think there's any artist that can beat Jay-Z when it comes to versus? The only one that I think would like come remotely like close, maybe so. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Let me see. You would just have to put him against Beyonce. Ooh. <laughs> Yo, that's the best side that shit. He's taking that L. <laughs> that's the only one who can like really. He's taking that L. He can't beat that. You mm-hmm. gonna make wifey look bad in public? Nah, you gonna have to take that L again. And don't let Solange be over there in her corner. <laughs> That's a good one. I never even thought about that. On my short list, I'll tell you real quick, Kanye and Drake. Those would be the two that could probably have enough hits that can that can go there. Now, the I magnitude think. of the hits, I'm not going to get into that. But I think, you know, as far as the number of hits, I think both of them can probably go at it. Yeah, they could probably go at it against each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. You're right. But I mean, talk about Drake. He got over 20 number one songs, though. I just ain't that same. I'm over here getting close, trying to see how I look. And probably (laughs) like, what the fuck is she doing? (laughs) You in the interview? You just all the way in it. (laughs) All right, one more time. Go ahead and drop your social media information for everybody to follow you. Um. So yeah, you can find me anywhere under Ezra Banks. That's E Z R A B A N K Z. And literally anywhere. And what's the okay. name of the project? Project Loyalty. What's and the name of them singles? We dropping Breakdown and we dropping um, 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 Give It To Me. There you go. Miss Ezra Banks over here, Waves of the Bay, episode 10 of the podcast. I'm Tone Capone. Like I said, people always misspelling my name. So check out the webpage, Tone. Dash Capone.com. I spell my name with a K. If you spell it with a C, you will not see me. So please make sure you spell my name correctly. Check the webpage out. You'll see the Waves of the Bay logo. You'll see Spaceship's logo. You'll see all these logos right over my back. You guys can even hear some music, catch old interviews. Everything is right there. So check the webpage out. And uh, whatever platform you use for your podcast, make sure you're following along with us. Ezra, I want to say thank you for taking time out of your evening to speak with us tonight. Uh, and I want to say thank you for continuing to drop new music and sending it our way, too. So just keep that up. And like I said, just stay ready. You ain't got to get ready, and you'll be ready for that opportunity. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Definitely. All right. Be easy. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. This Kino Sabi forever. Stand for something. We appreciate the blessing, bro. Let's go. Ain't trying to bite it. We create it, then we ride it. We know what wave of seismic, and you really can't deny it. We just keep on soaring higher. You would swear it's autopilot, then you realize tone and shift and made a living off a of fly. We are the wave, and it's bigger than the moment. It's a movement that's progressing like the trucks stick on opponents. It's time to stake our claim. It's time to bring the pain. We're battle tested. Now it's time to show it ain't a game. It's time to make a lane, a different vibe, another way. We're known for killing shit. You even help them pick their graves. We're breaking free and chains and running towards the day. Like the victories and plain sight. We're taking flight to reach heights. These boys are tired of waiting, tired of playing, time to go. This vibe's been percolating, gaining steam to explode.
Built in anticipation, maybe time to reload. We paid our dues, now we're coming back to refold. We kicking doughs, we ain't got no time for peepholes. We keep evolving for our family and our peoples. Ain't playing fair in this game, we just some cheat codes. We are the wave and our hurricanes on beast mode. Welcome to Win of the Bay.